Okay guys, so in this video, we're gonna see if the Abu Garcia Revo MG Extreme has the casting abilities to back up its $500 price tag. And of course, the best way to test this out is to put it into battle up against other $500 reels. And luckily for you guys, I have just the reels for the job. Okay, so I've come up with two different cast battles that I'm gonna put the MJ Extreme through. And the first one is gonna be casting a suspending jerk bait that weighs in between 3 eighths of an ounce and half an ounce. And the reels that it's gonna do battle against are gonna be the Daiwa Steez SV TW. And of course, you can't have a $500 baitcaster battle without a Shimano. So we have the Mighty Metanium DC. Now, strangely enough, a few months ago, all three of these reels were priced exactly the same at $500 on Tackle Warehouse. But for some reason, just before Christmas, Daiwa decided to raise the price on the Steez to $550. But I still think these reels are direct competition because they all have magnesium frames. Now it should be an interesting battle because this lure is not too heavy and not too light. And it's gonna be interesting because two of these reels, the MG Extreme and the Steez, have extremely lightweight spools for being standard bait casters, while the Metanium has a very heavy spool compared to these other two, but it has the advantage of having the DC braking system. So the second battle is going to be to see if the MJ Extreme can take the title of being the king of the quarter ounce casting plug. Now of course, in order to be the king, you have to kill the king, and the current king is the mighty Shimano Antares A. Now technically, I don't think these two are rivals when it comes to price as the Antares A cost $100 more than the Revo, but the quarter ounce casting plug title knows no price ranges. Now I think it has a good chance because the Revo MG Extreme has the lightest spool of any non-BFS reel in the world today. Now when you combine that with the stock hybrid ceramic bearings, I think it probably has a better chance than any other reel so far. So I'll see you guys out on the field. Okay, so the jerkbait battle is all finished, and I'll tell you what, it was a lot closer than I thought it would be, and we had a couple of really, really shocking results. Now, if you were smart enough to do the math, then you already know who won, but if you're not smart enough to do the math, then let's go over these results right now. Now, coming in third place, and probably the biggest shock of this battle is the Shimano Metanium DC. 
with an average of 148.8 feet. Now I say this is a big shock because I fully expected this Metanium to just stomp all over these other two reels in this battle, but not only did it not win, it actually came in last place. Now the brake settings for the Metanium were as follows. Spool tension set to just minimize side to side play. Internal line mode was set to mono and the external dial was set to two. Now there were some circumstances that worked against the Metanium, but uh, we won't go into that. All right, so coming in second place and the second biggest shock of this test is the Daiwa Steez SV with an average of 150.31 feet. And I say it's the second biggest shock because based on its previous performance in the quarter ounce casting plug battle, I expected these other two reels to just stomp all over the Steez, but not only did they not stomp all over the Steez, the Steez actually beat its arch rival in the Shimano Metanium DC. So I'm sure this is going to please a lot of the Daiwa fanboys. And finally, the Steez is starting to show that it's worth its high price tag. Now the brake settings for the Steez are as follows. Zero adjuster, left, just like it was out of the box. And the external brake, I was shifting around between, I believe, six and five. Now that's something about the Steez that I haven't mentioned before is that this reel has the ability to go really, really low on its brake setting. Whereas a reel like the Tatula SV, you definitely can't go that low on its brakes. And I don't know why. So that of course makes the winner of the jerkbait battle, the Revo MG Extreme with an average of 154.05 feet. So not a dominating victory for the Revo, but a clear victory over the Steez and Metanium. Now the brake settings for the Revo are as follows. Spool tension set to just minimize the side to side play. And the external dial was somewhere around here. Now the Revo was definitely the most consistent hitting mower casts in the 150 foot plus range. And the spool is very very fast and you can actually go pretty low on the brakes but at the same time it's still very controlled so that's kind of a, a strange mix there but yeah the Revo NG Extreme has dispatched the Mighty Metanium DC and the Daiwa Steez so let's see if it can beat the quarter ounce casting plug king and Terry's Okay guys, so the casting plug battle is over 
and was the Revo able to dethrone the Antares A? And the answer is no. The Revo averaged 167.7 feet, which is actually very good, but unfortunately, the Antares had its best day ever at this contest with an average of 182.03 feet, and it even had a cast that went over 190 feet. So, yeah, the Antares A seems to cast better and better the more I use it. And if any Antares A owners are watching this, let me know in the comments if your experience is the same. But it's not like the Revo didn't do a good job. I actually was able to back the brakes down on this reel for this contest to almost zero brakes. So right there is the minimum brake setting. And I was actually able to go as low as one click before you hit the minimum brake setting. But unfortunately that still wasn't enough to beat out the Antares. But the MG Extreme has nothing to be ashamed about because out of all the reels that have went through this cast battle, there's only two reels that have been able to beat the MG Extreme's distance, and that's of course the Antares and then the 2016 Metanium MGL. So as you can see by these two cast battles, the Revo MG Extreme definitely has the casting performance to back up its high price tag. Now there's a couple of things that uh, I think would make the MG Extreme cast even better. And the first thing is that I don't think it needs such a small spool. Now this has a 32 millimeter spool while the other three reels have 34 millimeter spools. And it definitely is gonna take a smaller spool, more revolutions to match the distance of the bigger spools. And the second thing is that I don't think this spool needs to hold so much line. Now I've spooled line directly from the MG Extreme to the Shimano Antares DC, which is a 200 capacity spool, and they hold exactly the same amount of line. So those are just my suggestions for the future version of the Revo MG Extreme. So in the last part of this video, we're going to talk about an area where I feel that the MG Extreme definitely falls short of its $500 price point, and that is going to be the feel. Now, what do I mean by the feel? Now, I kind of define the feel of a reel as a combination of a few things. Smoothness is one of them, refinement is another, and then build quality is another. So when you combine all three of those things, you get the feel of a reel, in my opinion. And this is where the MJ Extreme is a couple of levels below these other reels. Now, it is smooth for a Revo. It's probably the smoothest Revo that I've ever turned the handle on and I've had quite a few Revos but it's still not as smooth as these other reels and I think that's due to the fact that the tolerances are not as good on the Revos as they are with you know Shimano and Daiwa's particularly that Shimano Antares A. That reel smoothness and feel are on another level even over the Steez and the Metanium. But yeah, that's uh, one area where this Revo definitely falls behind the others. And I think it's because, as I said before, Abu Garcia is kind of at the mercy of the Doyo factory and their manufacturing capabilities. So until some Swedish billionaire purchases Abu Garcia and takes the production of all the reels back to Sweden, I don't see that's likely going to change in the future, but you never know. And another thing is the build quality. Now I'm not sure if it's all MG Extremes or if it's just this one, but when I was reeling the lures back out in the field, I could definitely feel the side plate moving a little bit. And you may not even see it that much, but I can definitely feel it just palming the reel and reeling in, you know, a casting plug or a, a jerk bait. So for a $500 reel, this definitely has the looks, the on paper specs, the casting ability, but the overall feel it is lacking. Now, the good news is if you're interested in one of these reels, you might be able to find it in Japan 
for a lot cheaper and I'm talking like almost half off. I'm sure that's where Billy got this reel from, somewhere in Japan, because all the other Revos he wanted to send me were JDM models. And I've looked on Japan Lure Shop and I think these were going for like 200 and 65 or 266 dollars so a lot cheaper than the 500 dollars that abu garcia usa is wanting to charge you but keep in mind you won't get a warranty all right guys there we go the revo mg extreme definitely has the looks the specs and the casting capabilities of a 500 dollar reel just not the smoothness and refinement and uh yeah that's my assessment thanks a lot